Born in 1768, Baron Jean-Baptiste Joseph Fourier was a fascinating man. Not only was Fourier a physicist, but he was also a mathematician and an Egyptologist of all things. His accomplishments include being appointed governor of a French province I would butcher if I tried to pronounce, discovering the greenhouse effect, publishing a treatise entitled The Analytic Theory of Heat, becoming one of the 72 scientists and mathematicians who had their name inscribed on the Eiffel Tower, and probably most importantly, creating a mathematical equation that allows YouTube, photo sharing websites, and the entire modern music industry to exist. Fourier's breakthrough was in how he thought to represent waves of any kind. Essentially, he thought of them as a summation of an infinite number of waves of different sizes. Using this insight, he created an equation that can be applied to not just music, videos, and photos. Fourier himself thought that it could be applied to pretty much everything. I know, I know, that makes almost no sense whatsoever. Fourier's breakthrough was at any wave whether repeating like a sinusoid or something far more complex like a voice recording, can be made by combining a bunch of regular sine waves together. For instance, if you take these normal sine waves and combine them all together, you get this more complex, irregular wave. You can imagine how, by adding more and more regular sine waves, maybe even an infinite number of sine waves, you can get a wave that is farther from this and more like this. The more carefully selected signs you add up, the closer you get to approximating your target wave. So if you add up an infinite number of signs, you'll get a wave that perfectly matches the one you were trying to replicate. This is where the Fourier transform comes in. A good analogy is to compare audio files, or waves, to a smoothie. As I said earlier, a wave can be created by adding together a bunch of normal sine waves, just as a smoothie can be created by adding together many different normal ingredients. What the Fourier transform does is take the finished smoothie, finds the ingredients, and how much of each ingredient is needed. Just like recipes, the sine waves that are added together are weighted, i.e. you need more of some waves than others. So the Fourier transform is just like a smoothie filter. You take the finished smoothie, put it through the filter, and out comes a bunch of ingredients and their amounts, or in our case, a bunch of signs and their weights. How is this useful, and how does it allow YouTube, digital photography, and online music to exist, as well as being helpful in a variety of other fields? Well, the answer lies in the fact that the signs are weighted. Say you're a hip new artist on the indie rock scene. You just recorded your new album, and you're ready to put it on Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube. The problem is, your final audio files are way too large for anyone to realistically stream or download, and your IT guy just quit because of your shameful lack of knowledge about the Fourier transform. What do you do? You have to lower your file size, and hopefully keep all your music sounding virtually unchanged. After some research, you decide to turn to good old Joseph Fourier for help. You put your songs through the transform, and realize that, to your surprise, only a couple of the sine waves are very prominent, and the rest are almost not noticeable, like this. You decide, in a last-ditch effort, to just completely get rid of the smaller waves that barely register. You delete the extra waves, take another listen to your file, and astonishingly, the song sounds exactly the same. Not only that, but the file size has been reduced to one-tenth of its former size. What you, or your indie rock star alter ego, has done, is exactly what every music file that has ever been sent over the internet goes through, and what makes file types like mp3 so ubiquitous. They've reduced the size of the file, and by ridding it of unnoticeable components, keeps the audio sounding the same. This same process is used on images and videos as well. So now you know how computers use the Fourier transform to compress audio, image, and video files. But the Fourier transform isn't a three-trick pony. While I've used it to talk about computing, the Fourier transform has its uses in a wide variety of fields and studies, such as quantum mechanics, signal processing, physics, and astronomy. In the last 200 odd years, the Fourier transform has grown from an equation only used in heat flow to something that helps keep a large part of modern online culture afloat. As brilliant as Jean-Baptiste Joseph Fourier was, there is no way he could have predicted what his equation has grown into. It's really quite amazing how Fourier's work has helped spawn much of the technical side of the internet, and it shows very well how discoveries in mathematics and physics can have such a profound and unpredictable effect on our daily lives.